something happened and things changed for me. I was sitting in a computer class and we were researching the famine in Somalia. And as I started seeing the pictures of the kids dying of, of uh, starvation and, and the tears running down their cheeks, I was moved. And at that moment, God gave me a heart for charity and helping those that, that couldn't be helped. The forgotten poor of this world. I couldn't breathe and as tears streamed down my face, I, I put the computer screen off and I walked out of computers. And that year I dropped out of university. I got on a second hand bicycle and decided I was going to cycle across South Africa to raise money for cancer. Many people told me it was impossible. I'd never cycled before, never done much training. But three weeks and one day later I arrived in Simon's Town and sat on this little bench overlooking the ocean. And I'd met God in a deep and intimate way. He'd given me a heart and a, a, new, a new outlook on life. And with the last money that I had, that I needed to get back home to the other side of the country, I decided to go get a tattoo of Africa, not knowing what this continent would mean to me a couple of years later. I felt I was being led to help. And five years later, I got the opportunity to cycle through Africa for yet another charity. I got on that same bicycle in Cairo and looked at the journey ahead of me. 10,500 kilometers and after months and years of training this was my dream to see Africa. I didn't have the money to see it as a tourist would see it so I got on that second hand bicycle I used what I had. I set out and I had this desire to raise as much money as I could for charity and break a world record. I got to Cape Town 59 days later in a new Guinness World Record time of the sea in our beautiful continent. I broke the record by 11 days. I averaged 177 kilometers per day through Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, Zambia, Botswana, and finally South Africa. This was my dream, but Africa had captured my heart. I have one specific memory in Ethiopia cycling up a massive mountain pass, going about 10 kilometers per hour and seeing this bright-faced, barefooted little girl running next to me on the bicycle, a little blue school dress, and she ran with me up the hill. And to be honest, I was thinking when she was going to turn around and go back home. But she kept running, and she kept running, and she kept running. And we got to this top of the, the hill 10 kilometers later, and she turned around to the top of the hill, waved at me, smiled the most beautiful smile I've seen and ran back home, ran towards her school that she was possibly going to be late for now. But just thinking back to that little girl running 20 kilometers in a, in a morning before school, it moved me. And I looked around at the poverty in Ethiopia, seeing doctors with degrees working as, as waiters because there was simply no work. And the, the words of a university lecturer came up to me and she said that, that if I fail the class, if I fail the accounting semester, that I would become nothing in my life. And I remember those words and I, I wondered if I could tell anybody in Ethiopia that. And at that moment I realized that there is other ways. There's more than, there's more than enough talents that we have to break our, our poverty cycles. And I just remember thinking, this is a way I can help these people. I was suddenly angry with the world. Education wasn't the only way to break a poverty cycle to help yourself. I suddenly wanted to tell the people of Africa that they could use their talents to be more. I had this vision of starting an NGO, a non-profit organization that could take what I knew, health, and sport, and fitness, back into Africa, back into the most rural of villages, and teach people that they could use what they had to become something great. <clears throat> I imagined that if somebody tried to find the hidden talent in Africa, that they could, but that we could go and find these people in villages and say to them, you can be the next world champion. To raise them as leaders, to raise them as athletes, and send them into the world 
that they could give back to their community, that they could break this impossible poverty cycle that people said only education could change. Forgotten Continent is the charity that we started to do just that. In March 2016, I'm going to be doing another cycling fundraiser, a solo expedition across Europe from Morocco to the top of Norway, 10,000 kilometers, to raise money for Forgotten Continent. I want to invite you to become part of this charity and support us. Help us to give back to the generous communities of Africa that gave so much to me during my cycle. We want to invite you as a volunteer to get involved so that you can come on missions with us into all of Africa. Keep a lookout on the page for upcoming trips and just visit our website and get all the information you can. And don't forget to like our Facebook page, Forgotten Continent, follow our Instagram page, Forgotten Continent as well, and all our other social media pages. We're looking forward to having you journey with us.